first day of Christmas, my true love sent to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love sent to me two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, my true love sent to me three French hens, two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me five gold rings, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me six geese a laying. It was the time of year I enjoyed most of all. Christmas Eve, once more in the old house, where I have spent most of my long life. I was sitting by the fire, counting. <laughs> Not counting the years, you understand, uh, but just counting. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, a hundred, coming! <laughs> My darling granddaughter Lizzie was spending Christmas with me. <laughs> we were having a whale of a time. <laughs> You'll never find me, Grandpa. <laughs> That's what you think, young Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha! <laughs> but Lizzie had forgotten the game we were playing. She discovered what I like to call my old treasure chest. Grandpa, what's all this? Why, these are all memories, Lizzie. The keepsakes from when your grandma and I were young. Now, this is grandma when she was about your age. Oh, I thought it was me. Yes, she looked exactly like you. Oh, I didn't know her then, of course. <laughs> I met her, oh, when she was quite the young lady. Oh, silly Billy. How can you say you've fallen in love with me? Why, you don't even know my name. Elizabeth! Elizabeth! I know it now. Put that pesky boy down, will you? Oh, father. It was Elizabeth's father. He bellowed like a bull, and he rather looked like one. Leave my daughter alone, you idle young rascal. Haven't you any work to do? I, I work at Miss Matilda's store, sir. Uh, but, but not today, it being a holiday. Ha! A shop worker? You'll have to do better than that if you want to be worthy of my Elizabeth. L like what? I've given her the best of everything, no matter how hard it was. Now, can you do that? Yes, sir. Very well. As it's the first day of Christmas, get her... Hmm, get her a partridge in a pear tree. That pear tree. <laughs> All right. I will. Well, I was stumped. And Matilda, bless her, wasn't any help at all. Oh, cheer up and forget about girls, Billy. You want a nice dog, or a cat, or a parrot. A parrot? But I don't want to be a pirate. Ha <laughs> ha ha, me hearties! Although it would have been easier than finding the partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> Wherever it was. On the first day of Christmas, my true love sent to me a partridge in a pear tree. Your father's challenge isn't easy. Hard things usually aren't. But I won't give up. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Didn't think you'd have it in you. But I'm a fair man, so you shall have another chance. Bring Elizabeth, um, uh, 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 can you believe he's in the choir? Ah, yes, two turtle doves. What? Oh, yes, sir. 
Little did Elizabeth's father know that Miss Matilda had two turtle doves for sale in the store. It's payday, Billy. If it's all the same, Miss Matilda, instead of money, I'd like to take these. But before I could finish, in walked Clara Brown, and I had to think fast. Still got those cute turtle doves, Miss Matilda? I want to buy them. I told the two lovebirds that if they didn't want to go with that awful girl, they'd better start acting like the best of enemies. Oh, I don't want them. On the second day of Christmas, my true love sent to me two turtle doves and oh, a Oh, Billy, and a they're adorable. Not as much as you are. So... He managed to find you a couple of turtle doves, eh? Well, my dear, tomorrow's the third day of Christmas. Let's see him get you three French hens. <laughs> Got your fare to France ready, my boy? <laughs> French hens, I ask you. <laughs> I headed for... where else? The docks. My luck was in, for a boat had just arrived from France. Um, parlez-vous français by any chance? All right, boy. I told him of my quest, and he said he had just the thing for me. Egg cups. Seeing my frown, he assured me they were clearly French <laughs> and hens. He had a point. I'll take three. Merci beaucoup, mon cher. But... But what? They're not French hens. Of course they are. You never said they had to be real hens. Oui, papa. C'est vrai. Her father was dumbstruck. <laughs> oh, but not for long. Calling birds. Four calling birds next, if you please. How long is this list of his? The zoo seemed the best place to start searching. I had no idea what calling birds were, so I asked. Calling birds? All birds are calling birds, young fella. When they call... That cleared that up. But how to get four together? Did you find them, Grandpa? No. <laughs> they found me. One, two, three, four. There they were. Four calling birds all in one go. Nice bike. Nice whistle. Want to trade? On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love said to me, as you gather, I was, by now, a regular visitor to dear Elizabeth's garden. Although her father still hadn't tired of testing me. Elizabeth, why are those confounded birds making such a din? It's me, father, with my four calling birds. Isn't Billy clever for finding them for me? Yes, I suppose so. But is he clever enough to find you five gold rings by tomorrow? Of course. Aren't you? <sighs> by the afternoon of the following day, I hadn't come up with even one gold ring, let alone five. Then, as if by magic... Pick a card. Ha-ha! <laughs> Tickle's the name, and magic's my game. Oh, can you give me back my youthful looks? <laughs> I deal in tricks of magic, dear lady, not miracles. <laughs> oh, uh, but uh, how could I give you back something that hasn't left you yet? Oh, cheeky! His tricks and magical curios were as quick and clever as his tongue. Miss Matilda and I were dazzled. It was like having a magician from the music hall doing a show just for us. Then, to my amazement, he produced five shiny gold 
rings. Ta-da! Hey! Uh, now, watch this. Now they're loose. <laughs> and now they're not. <laughs> Care to try them, young sir? Try as I might, I couldn't separate them. He and Miss Matilda <laughs> laughed at my efforts. <laughs> oh, looks like you've found a way of keeping him out of mischief. Make the boy a gift of them, and I'll take your entire stock. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Lady, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> and these are yours. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me five gold oh, rings, golden ring. four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Amazing, Billy. You got five gold rings. Yes, and they will come apart. Honest. <laughs> Look, Father. Billy found the rings. What? Oh! Ow! Oh. <laughs> Pity he can't find his feet. <laughs> <laughs> there, Lizzie. See? I still can't do it. <laughs> Never mind, Grandpa. Maybe one day. Hmm. If I live that long... My next task, set by Grandma's father, was to find... Six geese are laying. <laughs> exactly. And luckily for me, old Farmer Burrows was retiring and selling up his land. He was glad to find a good home for his geese. It was a struggle, but at last I succeeded in bringing them back to Elizabeth. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me... Look, Father. Geese. Six of them. Mm. I can see that. And see, they're starting to lay. I can see that too. Oh, the place is turning into a farmyard by the minute. Elizabeth's father complained that he wished he'd never started setting me tasks to prove my worth for his daughter. But Lizzie told him he must continue. It was all so much fun. Oh, very well. Tomorrow is the seventh day of Christmas, young un. And much as I hate the thought of more wretched birds about the place, it's seven swans a-swimming, if you please. How can you get hold of seven swans? Well, it's easy. You can't. Swans always have a partner for life. Oh, so I can't keep an odd number. No. One would be lonely. It wouldn't be fair. Oh, I suppose not. Good night. I went home with a heavy heart that evening. My little sister Daisy was putting on her Christmas show, and I was to be the audience. <laughs> Hopefully I'd be able to raise my spirits before curtain up. Ready? Oh, I've been waiting all day for this. Then the show began. As the curtain rose, I couldn't believe my eyes. <laughs> Swans! Seven swans are swimming. Well, I never. <laughs> Good old Daisy. If she hadn't given me her toy theater, well, I don't know what I'd have done. Seven swans are swimming. Six geese are laying. Things were improving. Elizabeth's father no longer shouted at me quite as loud. Next day was the eighth day of Christmas. So, without prompting, I set about coming up with eight maids a milking. I used my head and my limited powers of salesmanship. Now, milking stools are always three-legged. So those silly little four-legged stools that Miss Matilda could never sell, they were just the job for my plan. Roll up! Roll up! Amazing new invention! Four-legged milking stools. Come and try them out. First eight, free! Well, who can resist a bargain? Word spread fast. And Elizabeth... Saw it all. Business was brisk. 
I gave away the first eight, then made a handsome profit on the rest. At last, I seem to have impressed Elizabeth's father. Clearing my stock of stools needs rewarding, Billy. Here's your share of the money. And well deserved it is, too. Oh, that's very generous of you, Miss Matilda. Thank you. Just as I had hoped, I needed nine ladies dancing, and here they were. And here was I, with enough money to hire them. didn't think it was as good an idea as I did. Sorry, young sir. I have only the one. But I bought it anyway. <sighs> one down, eight ladies dancing to go. Oh! 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 oh. The other eight appeared sooner than I could have hoped for. Even though it meant a little pain, it was worth it. Sorry I'm late. It's the ninth day of Christmas, Elizabeth. So... You're a very resourceful lad, young Billy. That afternoon found me deep in thought. Next day, according to the song, I had to find ten lords a-leaping. Well, I ask you, what would you have done? <laughs> I wouldn't have had a clue, Grandpa. <laughs> and neither had I. Until... Whoa! Oh, bother. That's one balloon I won't sell now. Then a wild idea came to me. If I could leap into the air, then so could their lordships. The plan was mad and desperate. <laughs> but then again, so was I. <laughs> Madly in love and desperate to please. Next morning, I set myself up outside the club that was for their lordships only, and waited for them to come out and go about their lordly business. Here they come, Billy boy. One, two, three! Billy, you're a wonder. Is there no end to your ingenuity? I could take life easy that afternoon, for next day I needed eleven pipers piping. And I'd already made arrangements for them. But the next morning brought panic. I got a note from my cousin, who played in the regimental band and had promised to march past Elizabeth's with ten of his friends. Uh, pipers piping, see? <laughs> but the note informed me they were on their way to India. <laughs> it looked like I was beaten. And on the eleventh day of Christmas, poor Elizabeth waited in vain for me. Hmm. Doesn't look as if the young rascal's coming. Pity. I was beginning to like the lad. But you must have got them, Grandpa, or we wouldn't be here, would we? <laughs> That's right. And it was all a matter of being in the right place at the right time. And that was the next day when Thank old you. Mr. Weisskopf, the clockmaker, asked me for help. Ah, oh, what a word, Billy. <laughs> the old general ordered this specially, paid for it, and then up 
hopped and died. Oh. <laughs> Will you help me push it out the back? Uh, of course. Uh. <laughs> uh. Now his wife doesn't want it. Thinks it's ugly, and I don't want it. <laughs> Too noisy. Ah, there. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. You're welcome. And you'll stay there till the junk man comes, if he'll take you. I mean, who would want 11 pipers piping and 12 <gasps> drummers drumming every hour? Huh? Lonely a fool, that's who. Hey! hey. Hmm? Billy? You can call me a fool if you like. What? I was worried when you didn't call round yesterday. Sorry, but I didn't have this yesterday. It's the last two days of Christmas in one. Look! Any second now. Is that dreadful racket? The sound of me winning, sir. Aha! Not so fast, young Billy. You're a little short. I'm quite tall for my age, sir. No, not inches, boy. You're short to the tune of one partridge in a pear tree, remember? You won't give up now, Billy. Of course not. See you tomorrow. We had a terrific thunderstorm. Then, disaster struck. Tree. What will the poor partridge do for a home? Pear tree? Partridge? <laughs> to think they've been under my nose all the time. Don't worry, Mr. Partridge. I know a pear tree just waiting for a fine fellow like you to take up residence in. The rest is history, as they say. Your grandma and I became engaged and were soon married. And you lived together in this dear old house ever since. <laughs> we have, my dear. Ah, dinner. <laughs> I'm starving. Come on. Twelve day of Christmas, my true love said to me. Twelve drummers drumming, eleven pipers piping, ten lights a leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids a melting, seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five gold rings, five falling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree, and a partridge. 